Hello, I'm Larry Neal, and welcome to another edition of Library Matters Live. Today we're going to talk about ebooks and ebook readers, the used book nook, and friends of the library, as well as a very special event on May 3rd, Motown Lounge, A Taste of the Town. Come on and join me inside the library. A 2012 Pew Internet study showed that 62% of Americans didn't realize that their public libraries had e-books. Here at the Clinton Macomb Public Library, that's not the case. We have uh, over 17,000 e-books checked out last year alone. That's a 107% increase. And we're here to help the public understand the different options and all the things available for free through their local library. Julianne Morian will show us an overview of a table that we've set up here to let people try e-readers out firsthand before buying them. Exactly. We thought um, we would take it to the next step and not just offer downloadable content, but actually offer some of the devices so that people could play with them and get a feel for um, the different options that you're going to find in all the different devices. We have a variety of devices ranging from our popular Nook and Kindle options, but we also have some of our other um, lesser known brands such as the Sony Wi-Fi, and we actually have a Kobo e-reader that um, you can check out from us and borrow and play with at your leisure at your house. This is what we call our e-reader experience station. So you can see we've got five e-readers set up so that you can um, compare and contrast at the same time. We also have some helpful handouts that show you exactly how you would download an e-book to your specific device. And then we have a scrolling um, bit of information here that talks about um, the rise of e-books and why they're so popular and where we see trends heading in the future for e-book content. Okay, so Julianne, I know a lot of people come to us after the holidays. They've received these as gifts for Christmas yes. and Mother's Day. Uh, what does the library offer to help people deal with these new devices. We've been promoting our ebooks for the last three years, so we're very aware that we see a surge of questions around the holidays. Christmas, the most, uh, the, the one we're anticipating next is actually Mother's Day. We find that this is a very popular gift to give mothers, and so we've got a couple e-reader sessions set up for May, May 21st to be exact. Um, it's a Tuesday night. We offer classes from 5 till 8, and then we'll be offering other classes throughout the summer months. Um, so if you get one for June, Father's Day, or graduation, look for our events calendar on our website or in the newsletter for when the subsequent classes are coming up. Uh, a lot of things, uh, questions I hear from the public too are, well, is everything in the library now available on ebook? Mm -hmm. Not exactly, no. We're very committed to offering the traditional print mediums. Um, we are constrained by how many ebooks we can purchase. We, we're, we're trying to keep up with demand, but we find that it's a very popular medium. So our software does allow for you to place a hold on a popular title and then receive an email when it comes in. Um, and then, like you said, we're still committed to offering many different formats for enjoying stories and movies and um, other things from the library. And libraries have also had a difficult time with some of the big six publishers and getting them to loan to libraries mm -hmm. or to provide them at a price that is reasonable. So libraries across the country are working together to work with publishers so that we do have the ability to buy and provide titles that are fully available in print at this time. Exactly. Um, and like you said, it's a very popular service. Over 17,000 were checked out last year, and we only anticipate growing this service for our, for our public. Uh, you might also mention the Kindle, because that was a problem early on for people, that it wasn't available in that format. Mm -hmm. but. Yes, we do uh, um, provide for Kindle eBooks now. So um, that would work whether or not you have a Kindle device specifically, such as a Kindle Fire or um, a Kindle Paperwhite. Um, or if you have one of the Apple products, you can actually download the app for Kindle onto those Apple products and then enjoy Kindle eBooks as well. So we, um, we hit all the major devices and we have all the major formats for eBooks. And it's also important to note that some of the early versions of the downloading software for libraries was pretty cumbersome and they continue to work and improve on that experience. So if you did have problems earlier on, it is getting more streamlined and easier to use. It is. It's much easier and our training tutorial has um, grown with that. So um, we have updated our documentation and we've got videos online. So we've tried to reduce any barriers to making this a very easy process for you to get onto your device. 
And do people have to worry about overdue fines? I know that's no. another question. <laughs> no, no overdue fines with anything like this. Once you download it and you reach the maximum loan period, the, the title is um, inaccessible on your device, but it just rolls back into general circulation. So you don't even have to worry about returning it. And uh, beyond ebooks, you might talk also about other things that we have that are in downloadable format that people might enjoy. We do have some other downloadable formats, such as music and video and audiobooks. So, audiobooks is probably our second most popular favorite um, downloadable, and um, you would use the exact same software to get to any of those. Certainly, uh, when the internet came out, people were asking, was there still a need for libraries? And we get the same question now with ebooks. And to us, it's just another format that mm -hmm. makes another option for people to be able to read in yet another format, whether it's large type, audiobook, regular type. We just see it as a natural extension of the library services and what we have to offer. So uh, come on in or just visit us virtually, and we'd be happy to uh, serve you in this new way. The library is very fortunate to have hundreds of community volunteers who have gave over 14,000 hours last year alone to help the library and enhance our services. One of our most important groups is called the Friends of the Clinton Macomb Public Library. This group raises money through book sales and a new venture called the Used Book Nook behind us. Last year alone, the Friends gave the library over $60,000 to sponsor and underwrite all of our programming special services such as our ebook collection and more. Mary Russo is the president of the Friends and thought we would talk a little bit about the used book nook okay. here at the main library. Uh, our used book nook which is behind me here is doing exceptionally well. Uh, like Mr. Neal said we have collected over a thousand dollars a month uh, just on this book nook alone and uh, that would not be possible if it wasn't for the great community we live in uh, and their generous contributions of all these used books. It's because of the used books that this is even possible. Um, we, uh, all, of our, all of the people that are in the uh, used book nook are volunteers. Um, it is open every day from 10 to 7, except Friday it's open from 11 to 5, and it's closed on Sunday. When you visit the used book nook, it may have a familiar feel. The inside is uh, remnants that we purchased from a Borders store that closed. So if you miss Borders, come on in and you can see some of the fixtures and furnishings that will look familiar in a comfortable small little bookstore. The items in this store are all high quality at great prices. So if you're shopping for a gift or looking for a nice present uh, for a family member, the stock is always changing and you can get very current books at very reasonable rates. If you're interested in joining the Friends, you can come to any of the desks at any of our three locations. Uh, we have brochures available, or you can also uh, find them online. Um, we are now accepting textbooks, whereas we didn't prior to this. Uh, we do not accept encyclopedias or uh, Reader's Digest. Uh, we are also doing some selling on, uh, the, on eBay. So um, all of your books are very valuable to us. And again, the money all comes back to support library programs in the local community. So it's a great way to recycle. It's a great way to give back to the community. And in turn, we turn that into programs for kids and adults and family members of all ages. And uh, we, we just couldn't do everything we can with the help of our friends of the library. So we thank you so much, Mary, and, and all the other volunteers. You're very welcome. Last year, the library celebrated its 20th anniversary of its founding with a Taste of the Town celebration that included more than 300 participants. We had so much fun last year that we decided to offer an event again this year on May 3rd. Motown Lounge, A Taste of the Town. Last year we raised over $7,700 that was used to fund children's literacy projects and our tutor.com sessions that helps children after school uh, with an online tutor as well as job seekers with resume assistance online through the library's website. So Jamie, tell us a little bit about this year's event. 
Hi Larry, we are really excited about this year's event. Um, we've got a lot of great sponsors, um, platinum sponsors like our friends of the library. We've got um, gold sponsors that are local businesses that we um, encounter. And um, we've got 22 vendors, food vendors that are coming to offer a great taste of Clinton and Macomb Townships. Um, come with an empty belly because you're going to leave with a full stomach for sure. Um, we've also got the Michael Davis Show. They're going to be performing a one and a half hour show of all Motown hits. We've had them here as part of our Sunday concert music series and they've done a great job. Um, people can dance if they'd like, uh, kick back with a drink or just sit down and enjoy the show. It should be a really great time. Uh, what if I don't have blue suede shoes? <laughs> no need to have blue suede shoes. They come as you are or dress up. Dress the part if you'd like. Um, just come on out. I think it'll be a really great event. It's a really great Thing for us to be able to um, support some of the things like you mentioned the tutor.com and the children's literacy at the Clinton Macomb Public Library. So we know that people are gonna jump up and get their tickets. How do they get tickets and how much are they? Sure, you can get tickets online at our website. There is a link right on the homepage. It's Taste of the Town tickets. You can buy them online via credit card or you can come into any CMPL location and pay via cash or check. Tickets are $30, and if you want to wait till the night of, they are $40, but if you get them now, they're $30. And the event starts at 6.30, so we are looking forward to seeing all of you. It'll be a great time, and again, the money goes back to the library so we can support wonderful services that the community appreciates and wants. Yeah, there's also a lot of other great events aside from food. Um, we're going to have some basket raffles that people can purchase tickets for. Um, there'll be a dollar for each ticket or you'll get six for five dollars. Uh, a lot of great themes. There's a barbecue theme, a baby theme basket, a reading basket, a night out um, at the movies and dinner basket. So a lot of great ways to um, help support the library that way. And um, we're also offering a, um, it's a unique idea. It's called Judge a Book by Its Cover where we received um, gift cards from local businesses, uh, many of them restaurants, some of them uh, stores. And if you purchase a book for $20, you are guaranteed to get at least $20 back in a gift card to a local business inside the book. And it's kind of a mystery. Uh, you don't know what kind of gift card you'll be getting, but you can have a hint of what kind of gift card you'll be getting by looking at the title of the book you're buying. Uh, it's also important to note that on that Friday, May 3rd, that the main library will close at 2 p.m. The branch libraries will be open until 6 p.m. as normal, but we need to decorate this place and get it all ready, get the tables in, get all the food set up, and transport form it into a Motown lounge that should be a great uh, evening, a lot of fun, and supporting a great local uh, organization, your library. Sounds good. Thank you again for joining us for this edition of Library Matters Live. We look forward to seeing you and your family in the library or online virtually in the near future.